The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got markets in negative territory, some important economic data this morning, inflation data pretty much in line. The economy is on fire, folks. That is basically the premise. We got jobless claims pretty healthy. 233 number they were looking for was about 216. Markets were already in negative territory at about 5 a.m., approaching 5800 we're trading right now down 37 points in the s p's of 5814 nasdaq 100 now we got microsoft and meta both disappointing last night trading a little bit lower you have meta down about one to two percent right now microsoft down a little bit more than three percent boy they're spending a lot of money man we'll get into that one as well Nonetheless, we got the NASDAQ 100 down about 7 tenths percent. The Dow, Dow looking a little weak, man. Dow off 6 tenths percent, off 241 points at 42,124. And the Russell flat right now at 2246. I talk about the Dow. We're going to delete that one from yesterday. And how about it, man? From 43.5 down to 42.1. We're approaching this area that we were at, call it 42,000. And yeah, Dow looking a little bit weaker than, weaker than the other indices. Bitcoin, not so much. Bitcoin, up $200. We're pushing that 74000 mark, 74485 just yesterday. You got crude rising to 6961 right now. Call it 6947 And we jump over to gold. Now, we got some action in yields. We got some action in the dollar this morning. Gold pulling it back a bit. We're off by $22. We hit 2800 yesterday. We were close to that level as well this morning. Just at about... Yeah, I guess you rolled over at 10.30 last night. But even this morning, look, I, yeah, I was up early. 7 o'clock in the morning, we were up there at 27.93. And we're dropping a bit as we speak. These are 15-minute bars we're looking at. You have gold trading down $22 at 27.79. You jump to the all-important notes and bonds. And we got a little bit of lower price and higher yield coming at you right now. We got a 10-year back at about 4.3%. Yeah, we're sitting at 4.302. 4.302 is the number that we're looking at right now on that 10-year. Now, one of the more interesting facts this morning is you got some dollar weakness, even with yields sitting where they are, okay? Now, the dollar was up to 104.63 on Tuesday. Meanwhile, you have yields pretty much exactly where they are right now. The one thing I'm going to throw at you is, man, we might have a little bit of instability for because it's election season, okay? And don't think... That as we approach this, okay, the stability of the dollar is one of the things that gives it strength. And boy, this morning I said, you know what? Maybe the dollar is going to care if we have another fiasco of like 2020. Folks, you got to try and keep the politics out of it if it's not related to the market when you're making those decisions, okay? But you better believe that, for lack of a better term, if all hell breaks loose again, OK, you better believe that it could impact the strength of the dollar with the instability that could be present of a challenged election, right, of one candidate or the other claiming that the election is illegitimate. All right. You, yeah, I'm just this is it. Election season starting. I get group chats out there. Um, it is election season. The headlines are there and I can't believe we're five days out. But it is interesting. You're getting a little bit of a roll over here in the dollar. 103.89 as yields hold at about that uh, 4.3 level and gold pulling back even wheat with that weak dollar so there's a lot going on um, not always the correlation that we've been seeing here but boy we're going to get to find out where we go all right let's jump around to the two main events that were last night all right we jump over to the charts first we'll pull them up microsoft up to 444 in an instant but no not so much the case man and when they come on the earnings call kaboom you trade from 430 to 410 we're trading right now at about 415 you're going to open down about three to four percent from microsoft shares now all things considered you're sitting at 416 right now okay i'm going to show you where 416 is on this chart here i'll even put a i'll put a nice line on it okay 
That's even 419. Let me push it back down to 416. Point being, yeah, we're, we're, we're just coming back to basically this consolidation that we've been in this year, right? Look at that. Okay, now I'm going to take this one off. And what I want to show you here is as well, all right, when you're talking about A to B, C to Ds, and they are everywhere in this market, folks, for sure. A, B, C, it completed that one-to-one -one A to B, C to D formation up to 459. And yeah, now you're chopping around at about the 415 area. You got to love A to B, C to Ds, folks. Put them on your charts. They're everywhere in this market because of the moves that we've had. A. Point, the lows of 2022, the B point on Microsoft, the highs of 2023 in July, you pull back briefly and then kaboom, you do it all again up to about 460. That completes your A to B, C to D. And now we're chopping around at about 415 for Microsoft. But again, all things considered, right, where are we pulling back to? Just this area of you could call it support on Microsoft. Look for 400 if you're really looking for a nice entry there. You get below 400, you know, things could get some dicey. That's where you love to have your back against the wall when you're making trades. Microsoft, some good support at this 4 to 420 level, we'll call it. And then we jump over to Meta. So Meta, yeah, you can't even find the A to B, C to D in here because there was barely a pullback on that same pullback we got on Microsoft. That's your pullback there. It doesn't really jive. Uh, no real pullback at all, right? And nonetheless, you're only trading at 584. Okay, you're trading right there on this thing. Meta is just so strong, man. And let's jump over. To some of the numbers, though, we're going to kick things off first with inflation data. So we get the PCE this morning. The core number increases 0.3% in September and 2.7% from a year earlier. That's what the Fed loves, okay? That's their overall number that they love to look at. We're at 2.7%. We always said the final mile was going to be the toughest part to get things back to 2, right? It wasn't how fast we can go from 8% inflation to 4% inflation. It was how long is it going to take us to go from 4 to 3 and to go from 3 to 2. We're at 2.7. Now, the headline number overall, 2.1%, the lowest since early 2021. You're going to see that type of distinction all over the place, folks. Lowest since early 2021. We saw that same distinction with the ADP private payrolls yesterday. Okay? It's still big numbers, though. It's still big numbers. Inflation-adjusted consumer spending... 0.4% on the month. How about that one, man? The savings rate falling, but we're still at 4.6%. So decent numbers come in on the inflation front. That's for sure, man. Now, we jump over to Microsoft and Meta numbers. Microsoft shares disappointing cloud growth forecast. Yeah, that's a tough one for you, man. Sales from the Azure cloud computing business are going to rise 31 to 32%. But guess what? That's down from 34% a year ago. You talk about a high bar. And this is where, you know, people say price for perfection, right, to that degree. Yeah, adjusted for currency fluctuations, which was a slight deceleration from the 35% a year, uh, a quarter earlier, excuse me. I mean, they got big numbers, but boy, to keep up with the valuation they have right now, you better keep crushing it, and they disappoint a bit. The outlook followed an otherwise outbeat report. The company said first quarter revenue increased 16% to $65.6 billion and a profit of three thirty dollars a share. I mean, how about it, right? You got revenue rising 16% and you're pulling in $60 plus billion. Now, that was Microsoft, okay? But guess what? You're going to open a little bit lower and we're going to talk about meta numbers when we get back as well. How about spending like $100 billion? We got a lot to talk about, folks. We got Roblox numbers to talk about. We got many other equities. We'll take a look. We got Uber trading lower as well. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We're breaking down these numbers a little bit for the big two, Microsoft and Meta. Last night, we got Apple and Amazon tonight after the bell, but Microsoft shares. So you're down about $16. A couple things they talked about here are being restrained by um, trying to build out that AI and got not getting there quickly enough. Excuse me. Here we, here we go. The CFO, Amy Hood, said some data center capacities Microsoft had been counting on for its push into AI did not materialize, okay? And that constrained revenue growth. So that's a supply problem, right? That's a good problem to have because you can build out that supply. We're in short supply. And so we remain focused on getting into a more balanced position. Now, they have the analysts chiming in and what they say is, well, they're gonna have to spend more money to build out that supply. And if they're spending more money to build out the supply, what's gonna happen to margins? So keep your eye on that one. But boy, they're big numbers across the board. How about capital expenditure in the first quarter? $14.9 billion from Microsoft, up 50% from the same period a year earlier. Think about that. They spent 7.5 billion a year earlier in that period, and now they're up to 15 billion, okay? Prior to 2020, Microsoft had never spent that much on property and equipment over the course of a full year. And then you check it out, this is a cool one. So on the top here, you have sales. On the bottom, you have CapEx. Look at the rise, right? Sales in the quarter, 66 billion. They're spending 15 on CapEx. Last quarter, 65, 14. Look how quickly. You back it up to the middle uh, March of 23, they're only spending seven. There you are. Pretty remarkable, the acceleration, yeah, that they're keeping track of. All right, now we got to jump to Meta. So, AI losses. You know Zuckerberg, man. Zuckerberg, he's he's got eye on the prize of the future, and he thinks the future is bright when you are in AI or the metaverse, right? But, yes, they have some big numbers coming at you, man. So, the numbers for them, 
so Real Reality Labs, that's the division that's focused on AI and augmented reality. The losses are going to widen meaningfully this year. Okay, the 2025 budget is still being finalized. They lost $4.4 billion in the quarter. Okay, and that's the number. Costs projected to reach $100 billion this year. $100 billion, man. Whew. Revenue for the quarter, 45 to $48 billion is what they're looking for, the quarter that they're in right now. And the market was looking for about 46. So they split it to the high side a bit. And this is Reality Labs talking about the profit and top, talking about revenue. Okay, profit, they just keep losing money, man. But guess what? He has his eyes on the prize for the future. And how do they do that? Well, they do it by taking in money in their core businesses. Yeah. Social networks. How about sales of $40.6 in the period ending September 30th? That's a jump of 19%, man. The market was looking for $40.3 billion, so they do beat that number. And yeah, um, AI. AI-driven feed and video recommendations have led to an 8% increase in time spent on Facebook and 6% increase on Instagram. I wonder how they allocate those, right? How do you determine that their AI has led to? Are there other components that could have led to that increase as well? It's possible, okay? But for the full year, 96 to 98 billion are the expenses, lowering the top end of that range by 1 billion. So you're talking about 100 billion dollars in expenses. That is quite a number. We had one more I wanted to get into. Yeah. So nonetheless, spending Right. I think about it. I mean, how are you going to compete? Innovation is always going to be there, folks. OK, innovation is always going to be there. But boy, we are at a realm of history. It's going to be very difficult to compete with companies that are spending one hundred billion dollars every single year to build out data centers and AI farms that are going to control the globe. How that shapes the future has yet to be determined. But you better believe that when you have the computing power that they're going to have and the control they're going to have on data, and data is the future, folks. All right? I don't know how you compete with that on some levels. Now, yes, innovation is always going to compete, okay? Smaller, leaner companies have the ability on certain aspects. You think Microsoft, right? They talked about, saw a great interview with Balmer um, this past week. I think it was on a Bloomberg piece, and they were talking about him. They were talking about the Clippers in general. They had a great interview. They got a new arena that they're building out but they talked to him a little bit about microsoft and what he said was is of course they blew it how didn't they get it to the phone right how'd they let apple eat their lunch a company like microsoft well you know how they did it they were too big they were too entrenched they weren't mobile enough they had their best engineers working in other areas that were their bread and butter and a smaller leaner more innovative more growth driven company like apple came in and ate their lunch it's possible but boy, when you talk about the data computing power, it's going to be a tough one. All right, we jump over to other equities. Uber. Yeah, they're not so rosy about the holiday season and the forecast, man. Look at the drop in Uber from $82 to $73.25 this morning. Now, this thing's been on fire, okay? And the one thing I'll say is, if you're watching this channel, we're going to be at a critical area, man, because this has been such a well-defined channel you bounce off the top end even the pullback that we got in august on their last numbers you dump to the bottom portion of that and where are we going to come to right now we're going to jump right to where the top of this channel is 73.25 is where uber is going to open the bottom portion of that 72 bucks again you know if you're looking to get an uber keep your eye on it man you get a bounce there maybe you get a bounce but i don't know because they're talking about uh some tough quarters ahead and we'll see where we go from there. But, yes, they are. And we get the headlines. Muted holiday forecast is the number there. They have an operating profit of more than $1 billion, 1.06. They struggled with currency exchange headwinds. Okay. Uh, gross bookings. And that includes everything. Hails, delivery orders, driver and merchant earnings, but not tips. $41 billion for the third quarter. Yeah, slightly below midpoint of their own guidance. The market was looking for more there. And for the current quarter, they're looking for 42.75 to 44.25. And the midpoint just misses the number they were looking for at 43.7. Now, they're investing heavily, okay? And they got some, some decent things coming down the line. Uber's a great company. I've talked about it many times. In the long term, they're a big company, man. And, and they have quite a stranglehold on the ride-sharing business whether you talk about uber eats you talk about uber anytime folks i've said it before 
that the name of your company becomes a verb in the English language, you know you got something. People don't say, I'm going to lift to the party. They say, I'm going to Uber to the party. Okay? They don't. Yeah, and that says it all. Uh, but nonetheless, you're going to pull back today to about $73 from $79.43. We got a negative market weighing down everything right now. And you got NASDAQ futures trading at 20376 down about 160 points. We check in on Apple and Amazon. They'll have their numbers after the bell. And they're getting weighed down by the two giants, Microsoft and Meta, of course. You got Apple shares. Down about a dollar to 228.89. We jump over to Amazon shares. You know, a little bit of a miss. You see the spike there on the Microsoft numbers. Amazon down about two dollars in the pre-market, trading at 190.40 from 192.73. Come on back, folks. We'll talk a little bit of Roblox. We'll talk some other equities. We'll take a look at gold as well. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets trading lower on the open S&Ps, challenging the lows we had at about 4 to 5, 6 a.m. this morning. You're talking about 5,800. We're down right now by 48 points, trading at 5,804. NASDAQ 100, we're down 194 points. That's almost a full percentage point, 20,340. The Dow down 257. Yeah, the Dow. When you look at it on a daily, right? We'll jump to these for a moment. Extending those losses, we got a low out there of October 8th. That low, 42,091, so within about 10, 15 points of that low. And we are now down 
1,500 plus points, more than 3% from where we were just 10 days ago in the Dow. You compare that to the NASDAQ and the S&P, not quite the same scenario. Right, a little bit lower for sure. But you're looking at an S and P down about 120 points, so two percent basically off the highs there. You jump over to the Nasdaq, and we're barely. I mean, you were basically pushing those highs just yesterday. But yeah, in the last couple of days alone, in terms of yesterday today, down about 500 points from where you were trading at, and the Russell chopping around at about 22.46 this morning. Let's check in on Microsoft and Meta as we open. And yeah, you got a little bit of a dip lower. You got Microsoft shares down 4.6% right now, and we have Meta shares down two and a quarter percent right now. Amazon down 1.4% right now. You jump over to Apple shares down about seven tenths percent. Google reported earlier in the week. Google catches a little bit of a lift up by three tenths percent. I guess in the context of Google crushing it, when you look at Microsoft having some problems in cloud, right? Well, there are even better numbers when you're differentiating yourself from the competition, as in it's not just the industry. Google exceeding expectations at a time when some of those other cloud providers having some problems. We'll see how Amazon does tonight with AWS and their cloud. We'll see how Apple does as well. Let's see how Uber's trading on their open as this market trades lower. Uber, Uber down about, look at that bounce. Look at that bounce. Keep your eye on it, man. I mean, isn't that remarkable, right? Where'd it bounce? Now, yeah, it went a, a buck lower, but you get the point, right? That line, folks, that channel line, this is a five-minute chart we're looking at. Well, guess what? That channel line goes back two years, and somehow you're bouncing right at the upper portion. So keep your eye on that channel line for right now, and maybe that's where you get a little bit, bit of a bounce. Uber's a strong company, but boy, they guided down. They missed the marks. You're at uh, down 8%, and you trade below that. OK, and I wouldn't give yourself a lot of room like right now, man, 7118. Maybe you put it up a quarter below that. Maybe you give yourself 70, 96 or something. The other thing about this, right? Everything is a certain degree of a metagame. OK, so when you're setting stops, don't put them in a round number. OK, don't say I'm going to get out at seventy two dollars. Give it like 7195. Give it 7194. Give it 7192. Right? Give it 7175. Give yourself that extra quarter if you want. Okay? It's a mental game of what is going on in markets. Keep that in mind when you're looking at either price targets, support, resistance, all of that. Okay? When you're setting stops, think about where everybody else is going to set their stop. Okay? And factor that in to the metagame that's going on in certain situations like that. Now, we jump to Roblox. This one's an interesting one, man. Now, Roblox is a video game platform. You're up by 13.3% today. You were all the way up to $53.99. Now, for context here, you were up to $141 in the COVID acceleration to higher prices in 2021. This became the most expensive video game company in the world back then. And then you drive down to $21 over the span of, what, six months, okay? Now, you're at $48 today. You're kind of put bumping up against this higher boundary line, which is about $50 in this equity, right? We're up to highs of $53.88 in 2022. You make a high of $47.65 in early 2023. You got back up to $47.20 at the end of that year, and we've been challenging that area the last couple months, but right now you're up by 13.9%. Now I bring this one up, okay? Tommy plays this game. Tommy's three years old. We keep our eye on him, believe me. He gets a little screen time, all things in context, okay? His brother Landon plays it as well, Landon Seven. It's amazing how much he enjoys this game, folks, okay? We have the tablet. And we have a Switch in the house. So the Switch has, we got Mario Kart. We have a couple uh, Marvel Lego games on the Switch. He's got many games that he can access on his Amazon kids tablet, Fire tablet, okay? He loves Roblox because you can choose a variety of games. And you look at the percentage of players that are under 13 years old. Where is it? It's here somewhere. 40% of their user base is 12 years old or under, okay? Remember when I tell you to listen to the anecdotal experiences that you have in life? Don't let them drive everything, but listen to them. They matter. It is amazing the hold that this game has on kids because it's many games, okay? And it's user-driven. Now, Tommy, we don't offer chat. I think there's voice chat you can have in there. He's not chatting with everybody. Chat is not on, etc. We've always kept track of that, okay? They talk about it that in November... Roblox is going to roll out safety changes following widespread criticism of its policies. And you're talking about basically 
child predators out there. Okay, you know that there's 40% of the users out there are kids. The biggest base in there is, okay, will require parental permission to access certain chat features. Folks, if you got a kid that's under 12 years old and you're not making sure that the games they're using aren't in there and getting driven by chat, you know, that's where you got to, you know, have some parental ability, even if, but nonetheless, they're going to have parental permission to access certain chat features. That was the biggest thing. He's never chatted with anybody on there. Okay. And yeah, they've had some real problems there. And there's been articles written on how they haven't done the right thing. Okay. Well, the market's going to force them to do the right thing because they paid for it. Um, yeah. Hindenburg says they published a report that they were not doing enough to stop child predators. Okay, so that's out there hanging, but they're going to get over that one. They are. And realistically, as somebody that sees this game constantly, you don't have to have those options enabled. And for a child, I do not have those options enabled. And I make sure that when I'm watching him, that he's not having those option um, interactions across the board. Period. End of sentence, right? But boy, <laughs> the other thing is we don't pay any money for this service, okay? Okay. But you would not believe, and that's my biggest complaint about this game, is the constant barrage of, oh, this certain item costs this much money. Do you want to buy it? Now, that all that stuff's been disabled within the app, okay? But I'm telling you, folks, the way that young kids enjoy this app is something that defies logic. When you think about the competitors they have in that market, whether you're talking about a Switch, whether you're just talking about all the apps that are out there, okay? He has apps on the tablet that are Sonic. He loves Sonic the Hedgehog right now. He can play every Sonic game I used to play as a child. I was talking to friends. We used to have to buy a Sega Genesis, and then you have to go buy the Sonic game. You have to have a TV. These days, what do you got? All you do is you go out, you buy a tablet, and you gain access to all these retro games completely free. But guess what? He enjoys them. He enjoys Roblox the most. So I'm always keeping my eye on this one, man. And I, um, yeah, Roblox, you're up by 15% today. You might be bumping into an area, but boy, you break above this area, man. And that area is about 53.88. And it is interesting because where were we pre-market? 53.99. Okay. So you slightly reject it. Keep your eye on that one for Roblox. But strong numbers for Roblox, and maybe they're turning the corner on their growth. But boy, it's big numbers, man, when you talk about it. And how, and how many is the big numbers that they're talking about? 88.9 million daily active users. Amazing. Yeah. They attribute the growth to discovery features like AI, helping users find games they like. And you should see it, folks. Um, it's an application that is user-driven in terms of many, many different games within the game. All right, folks. We got markets trading lower. Stay tuned. We'll come back. We'll take a look at some different equities. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. 
Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps drive down to 57.93 on the open right now. We're trading down 49 points, down 8 tenths percent. NASDAQ 100, look at that pop on the open. I should say drop, right? No pop, just drop. Down 261 points, 1.3 percent. We check in. On Microsoft, they get below the overnight lows. We're down by 5.1 percent for Microsoft. This market's worried, man. You got Meta down by 2.2%. We got these companies spending magnificently, okay? And we'll see if the lows hold. But we are not priced for perfection. But boy, you better believe we're priced for some dramatic expectations to the upside. We got decent inflation numbers this morning came out. We had jobless claims just above expectations, but 233, pretty much in the realm of a healthy number. We fast forward. Non-farm payrolls tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. We got... Amazon and Apple after the bell tonight. Amazon down 1.3%. You got Apple shares down by just two tenths percent right now. And then the main events, man. We get the election on Tuesday. We get the Federal Reserve meeting on Thursday. And remember, folks, okay, the election is not going to be decided on election day because that's how democracy works in America right now. You have states like Pennsylvania that cannot per their legislative rules that they designed, cannot begin counting early ballots until the morning of Election Day. It's a shame that they didn't get that changed over the last four years in light of how things played out in 2020, but it's going to happen again. It is going to take three to four days for all of those mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania in particular to get counted, to find out where we are, whether Trump's ahead. He's going to say, stop the count. If he's behind, he's going to say, find me some votes. Either way, it's going to take three to four days. And you're going to see the volatility play out. And so next week, man, it's going to be interesting. Election day is Tuesday. The Fed is going to be meeting with a decision on Thursday. And we're not even going to know, potentially, who has won the election yet. Can't, you know, here we are. We're gearing up for it. All right, let's talk a little bit of baseball and the L.A. Dodgers. Man, tough one for you Yanks fans. I got all the respect in the world for those Yankees. Um, got to love the rivalry. I remember, man, when I was 23, 24 years old, okay, I was on Lansdowne Street in Boston. The Sox were coming to try and get their first championship in, what was it, 1903? My goodness, something like that, right? Um, an amazing time. Nonetheless, those Yankees, man, that series where they came back. I mean, if you haven't checked it out, folks, I just started watching a teaser of it last night on Netflix, the the documentary of that Red Sox season. Man, I was just timing is everything. And to be right out of college, 23 years old, living in Boston, partying in Lansdowne Street, right next to Fenway Park as the Red Sox came back. We were there every night for those games, folks. We were for there for the first one they went. Uh, down 3-0 to the Yankees, and we were there for every game after that. And the remarkable thing was is that the World Series was like 
not an afterthought, right? But once we beat the Yankees, it seemed like this is it. It's destiny, and it sure was, and they came in. Um, but, boy, just a lesson for all of us when I think about it. Remarkable. The Dodgers were up 5 nothing in the fifth inning, folks, and they, the Yankees, uh, excuse me, the Yankees were up 5 nothing in the fifth inning, looking to make that series 3-2. You make it 3-2, it's a brand-new game. Okay, you make it three two. The Yankees probably feel like they have the momentum. We know how this goes in sports, right? The moment doubt creeps in, momentum is real in everything, folks. Momentum. Okay, but what happens is, is how does it happen? And this is the most remarkable story of all, I think, in my opinion. Okay, and there's a bunch of amazing storylines in this World Series. Was the error that Aaron Judge had in that fifth inning? Because as remarkable as it is, folks, okay, there was one out in the fifth. I think it was. Maybe there was just no. There's a base runner on. Zero outs in the fifth. And it was a regular fly ball to center field. I had to pull up the headlines this morning and actually watch the video. I'm up at like 6 in the morning. I'm watching baseball headlines. I had to, right? I couldn't believe, and you can so Judge just missed a very basic fly ball to center. I said, man, what are the odds of that? Do you know what the odds are of that? That was his first error in 2024, regular season or postseason. Man, you talk about variance and volatility at the wrong time. Um, that doesn't happen. We got a different story tonight, Judge said, and that started a collapse that had a bunch of different errors there. Um, the 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 ball, if you saw it down to first base, what was the pitcher doing not running to first base? Just confusion. Maybe that was the doubt that crept in just on that drop ball. But how about that, right? Not a single error in the entire year. And what happens? You drop a fly ball. Remember, folks, stay focused. And I'm sure he was. Judge is amazing. He had quite a season. It's a bummer when you see a game decided like that to a certain degree, right? But that's it. Every pitch matters. Don't lose focus across the board. Um, and the Dodgers get it done. Five run fifth. You got to give credit where it's due, man, because a lot of times they would have given up, right? You're down five nothing, the fifth inning. And man, you talk about the pitching in this game, okay? You had Cole, the Yankees starter. He threw just 49 pitches to get into the four hitless innings that he had. And then just to get out of that fifth inning, I think it was 39 pitches or something like that. Where what? is it? 38 pitches just to get out of that inning, and he had done 49 the game before uh, the, the the last four. Pretty remarkable in that context. Now, you want to talk about remarkable. How about Freddie Freeman? I, I didn't even really know this guy. I did. I've heard the name. But this guy. So he ends day, game one with that walk-off grand slam. Okay? He hits a home run in the first four games. And then last night, he drives in two more runs. He's the MVP, okay? He hits four homers and 12 RBIs. And, yeah, that dramatic game one homer. But dating back to the last World Series that he was in, he hit a home run in six straight World Series games. That defies logic, man. I mean, everybody dreams of hitting a home run in a World Series game. This guy went six straight games hitting a home run. And let alone, he walks it off with a grand slam in game one. He hits a home run in game two, three, and four. And then he gets a big hit with two RBIs in game five that clinches the World Series. It's, it's that. You can't say enough about that. I mean, unobvious. I mean, just remarkable on that level. All right, what do we? What else we got going on? Yeah, we talked about Microsoft. We've talked inflation, Uber, elections, Roblox, and yeah, inflation. Let's jump around to some of the equities we got going on as this market is deteriorating. You got Apple rolling over to negative prices. Boy, you know it feels like that this is the first indication when you got Microsoft and Meta. Look at Microsoft down 5.4 percent. Meta shares down 2.7 percent. We jump over to Nvidia shares right now, down three. 0.5 percent to 134 right now check in on netflix jumping around to different equities basically flat we jump over to tesla shares right now down one percent to 254 if you're trading tesla out there okay because we got a trade going on in market insights in tesla right now you got a technical area here that's tough to get through okay yeah we had a ton of volume i had a great email from one of our listeners yesterday talking about you know what about potentially we're talking about big volume right in a to b c to d yes on the longer term it could be but look at this area 
In order to have that confirmed A to B, C to D formation, you're going to need follow through and you're going to have to break that B point. We're just not doing it. But guess what? I'm not going to hold that one through the election, I think, because we know that could be volatile. One more segment, folks. S&P's off by 68. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the market in negative territory, accelerating to losses. NASDAQ 100 right now off 1.8%. The S&P's off 1.2%. The Dow off about 7 tenths percent. We jumped to Comcast. So trying to navigate a world where everybody is cord cutting. You got Comcast, the headline out there. They're going to be considering spinning out the cable networks and streaming partnerships. The cable and entertainment firm posted a jump in quarterly revenue boosted by the media business, but the big headline there is they're exploring the creation of a separate company for its cable networks and consider partnerships in streaming. Yeah, and uh, they're trying to navigate, right? Right there. The challenge is posed by cable TV cord cutting, and yeah, that's a real deal, man. I can tell you, though, I've cord cut, folks, but it feels like I haven't. And I'm going to do a reevaluation of what I'm subscribed to when they all come up for renewal because right now I got too much going on. Don't need them all. Way too much money. I'm probably paying more than I would have for a cable service. But the thing is, you want more than a cable service this day and age. Many great programs on Netflix, HBO, Max, I'm a huge fan of as well. 
and then you go down the line. But I'm talking about Paramount. I'm talking about Peacock. I'm talking about Prime Video. I'm talking about Netflix. I'm talking about, uh, yeah, Max, the likes. It's it's all across the board. But advertising, one of the big components. And when you look at those numbers, I'm saying to myself, you know what? What am I doing tw- paying 25 bucks a month for a Netflix subscription? I got to cut that down, man. Even if there's ads in the household, there's no reason to be paying that much money for a Netflix subscription. So they're all under the heat in a big way. That's Comcast. You do pop, you give it back a bit on their numbers. They're still up by 3.5% in a negative market. You jump over to Netflix shares this morning, up by about two tenths percent. Warner Brothers Discovery catches a lift up by 3.5%. We check back in on Microsoft and Meta. Microsoft down 5% right now. Meta shares down 2.5%. Uber on their numbers down 8.6%. And we got Amazon and Apple tonight. Amazon down 2.2%. Apple shares down by 4 tenths percent. All right, folks. Thanks so much for kicking off your trading day right here. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. And I'll see you tomorrow. We got non-farm payrolls tomorrow at 830. I'll see you on Friday, folks. Stay tuned for our man Basil. He's coming up right now. Have a great one, folks.